Hi and welcome to Winner's Corner. A new Saturday is here and along with that also a new V75 round. Axevala Racetrack is the host for this Saturday's meeting and Axevala is the track in Sweden that has the longest home straight. 227 meters. And Mike, uh, what does that do for your way of thinking now when you're going to uh, analyze the races? Well, to be perfectly honest, not all that much. You still see a lot of winners from the lead at Axvall as well. Uh, although you do see more winners from behind than at some of the other tracks. But it doesn't really affect my my uh, analyzing all that much. I'm pretty happy about this round because there are a couple of uh, really strong fa or big favorites that I feel aren't all that strong. There are good reasons to go against them, and that makes me excited. That sounds very good. And uh, But this time, though, Mike, we're going to start with uh, a couple of bets that you have placed in the races outside the V75 frame. So we start in race one, which is a Monte race, and you have fallen for number three, Veiled. A five-year-old mare who got disqualified in her last race. Um, please explain why you regard her as uh, being a good win bet here. Well, I don't usually bet on the Monte, but this one really caught my eye here. Veiled is by far the best horse in this race and has an excellent proper position here. Second to last time, the horse was out against some pretty tough competitors and finished quite nicely on the inside there on the open stretch. Then the horse went off stride at Yegesho, like you said. After that, the horse has been scratched once, but that was due to weather conditions. Uh, that was also a Monte race, so I believe they've been aiming for this race. They probably trained the horse in Monte, and we all know that the horses from this trainer are really, really strong and keep on going all the way to the wire, uh, and that could prove very valuable in a Monte race. I think Veiled is just going to go to the lead and just keep a high tempo all through the race and that's going to make the handicaps really difficult. So we start off this day with a nice win bet in race one on horse number three, Veiled. We make a jump to race three. It's a sprint race where you are going to recommend us a show bet. Yes, a show bet mainly, maybe a little bit to win as well. I don't think this horse is without uh, possibility to win this race. Number two, Julan Palema. Uh, this is a pretty decent race horse, doesn't win very often, only one win so far in her career, but five second places, so that's a big minus. Same last time, the horse was in the lead over the final stretch there, but didn't really show the determination to stay first all the way to the wire. Got beat the last 50 meters. Now, I think it's a big plus this is a sprint race. The horse is really fast behind the gate, very likely to take the lead here. And over the sprint, I think that uh, she can get away from them. She won't need all that determination. As long as Mike Anderson just steps on the gas a bit early through the last turn and has a few lengths advantage as they reach the final stretch, I think uh, the horse could stay first all the way to the wire. But show is the way to go when, the, when, when you have a horse that has one win and five second places. So number two, Jolan Palema, a show bet here in race three. We jump all the way now to race eight. Um, it equals the fourth leg in the V75 around. It's a big field, 14 horses now when uh, number eight, uh, Mr. Christ, has been scratched. And... Uh, you think that you've figured this race out, Mike? Well, <laughs> I hope so. At least I've got a winner that I just have to go for. It's one of my favorite horses. Island Life has been racing for Peter Norman for several years. Uh, three years ago, the horse had a really nice career. He was on his way up. I was uh, thinking he was aiming for the gold division when he won this V75 race with Eric Algerson in the bike in great style. He started off from the 11 hole there, just cleared around the field the last 500 meters. And uh, some of those horses he beat there really Went, had a great career after that. So he, he looked like he was on his way to become a real star. Uh, after that, he hasn't really convinced. He's had a few years that been slumping a bit, but now they moved the horse to Robert Berg, and he makes his first appearance now for Robert Berg, and that is really hopeful for me. I think that people have forgotten how good this horse is. I know Robert Berg is happy with the way the horse is training, and since he debuts him on the V75, he's got to be uh, a, a, great, uh, a great bet. Very well then. Number 14 Island Life is a win bet in race 8. The daily double we have in races 10 and 11 and uh, DD1 is a bronze division race over the long distance 3140 meters. Number 1 Illuminati has uh, in his last five races he's been out over the long distance three times won all of those three races. He's the biggest favorite in the round and Mike I'm kind of curious to think uh, or to, to hear how you've come to the conclusion that it is wise to go against this horse and instead uh, bank number seven Pacific face on the DD system. Well, first off, he's the biggest favorite of the round. He's way too much of a favorite. He is a 
Fantastic horse, phenomenal horse, especially over long distance. But he's got the worst post possible for him because he's not fast enough to keep the lead here, and that makes him a little bit vulnerable. Of course, over 3,000 meters, he's very likely to, to be able to move off the rail, so he'll, he'll get his chances. But betting-wise, Pacific Face is much more interesting. He is an incredibly strong horse. Remember a second to last time when he was on his way to win, to win the V75 final there against some top-notch horses when he broke stride over the final stretch. This horse gallops a lot. He's he's difficult to keep trotting. He he he's not the best. He doesn't have the best technique of all the horses, but he is strong like an ox and he just keeps on going. And over this long distance here, the way the percentages look, I think we're going to get great odds on Pacific Face. He's going to be way overlooked and Illuminati is going to draw everyone's attention. Okay then, Mike. DD2. We can uh, see that you also here go against the favorite, uh, that is number nine, Vlad Del Ronco, and instead chooses an outsider in number two, Chapuy. Please tell us why. Well, first off, I, I don't buy that Vlad Del Ronco is such a big favorite. It's, it's the Bjorn Goop effect. Everybody, when Bjorn Goop drives a horse for the first time, everybody just goes for it. And they don't analyze what kind of a horse it is. Uh, Chapuy, very likely to take the lead here. Jepson driving. Uh, great performance last time at Sovala. Uh, this horse just keeps keeps on impressing and improving. Trained by Oke Limblom with a good driver. I think Chapuy has a great chance to win it from the, from the lead here. Vlad Del Ronco starting off in the second row. That's always difficult. And this means that we have one single combination for the Daily Double this Saturday. Time now to go through the V75 round. And Axavala is a nice track betting wise, normally high payouts. And uh, how do you normally perform at Axavala as a punter? Well, I've been close a few times. I haven't won anything big at Axavala, but I like the track. It, it's a nice track. And uh, uh, usually, Axvala, I feel, is a bit exceptional that the home trainers are usually very successful there. Um, it, when the V75 meet travels to Axvala, the home trainers like Per Hedberg, for instance, they always have their horses well prepared. Okay, then let's take a look at what your, uh, what your system looks like. And uh, we can see here that you have uh, three bankers, and we've talked about two of them. That is number 14, Island Life, in the fourth leg, and number two, Chapuy, in the last leg. So, what do you want to say about your third banker, number four, Vestibo Exact, in the fifth leg? Well, it's a bit of a gamble as usual, but it's a three-horse race. I feel that horses one, three, and four stand out, and uh, the one that takes the lead will have a good, uh, good chance. Uh, there's also another kind of scenario. I think numbers one and three will battle it out for the lead here, and that means number four, Vestiborg Sack, could get a good trip right behind them. The horse has shown fantastic form. Last time he got the chance too late on the open stretch there when Stepping Space Boy managed to win that V75, uh, or Stepping Space Boy was on the outside there. So Stepping Space Boy is good from the lead. He's going to have a hard time passing number one always on time, but hopefully they keep a high pace and that will open the race up for number four, Vestibo Exact, and the horses on the second row as well. But uh, Vestibo Exact with a good post, mm. my pick. Mm. Okay, then let's uh, also talk a little bit about the three races that we haven't talked about yet. That is the first three legs and starting with V75-1, uh, the class two race of a long distance uh, where you need six horses. Um, what do you have to say about those? Well, this is the most even field on the V75 this Saturday. It's a long distance race for the lowest category on the V75. That usually means upsets. So uh, it could be a good idea to mark all the horses in this race, to be honest. But uh, Carlos Ken is my first pick. Okay, then V75-2 is a race uh, for mares over um, full distance, 15 of them. And uh, we can see also here that you use six marks. Uh, again, a pretty open race. Uh, the ones up front will, of course, have a, a, an advantage. It's always difficult to have a 20-meter handicap. So uh, numbers one and uh, six are the front, likely front runners. one of those two. Uh, I believe number six may come out as a favorite when everything's done here. But uh, the outsider to look out for is number 11, Sahara Sun, this time driven by Torben Janssen. I think that's interesting on a horse that's in good form. And then finally, V75-3 is the gold division, and we get to see a couple of really nice horses here. Number three, on track Piraten, and horse number 10, Nimbus CD. And you mark those two plus three more horses. What do you expect out of this race? Well, I, I think it's a very even race for once on, in the winter on the V75 in the gold division. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing number 11, Platon Face, once again, over long distance here. 
there are a couple of horses that are very overlooked, curiously overlooked in the early bets. Number seven, Timon Eck, who's on his way up now. Uh, a few races now, three races for uh, Jerry Reardon and improving with every race. That's a superstar. Uh, would have liked the sprint distance instead, though. But number four, Elliot Koger is the most interesting one. The way that horse finished last time, he was just flying and uh, showed fantastic form and completely overlooked. I don't know why. This sounds great, Mike. Uh, promising V75 system there from Mike. 900 combinations is what it all adds up to. Mike, thank you very much and uh, thank you for watching. And of course, you find much more information at our website, SwedishHorseRacing.com. And with that, we wish you the best of luck now with your bets this Saturday to Axevala Racetrack. Bye-bye.